Hey, it's Sebastian from SkyComp Solutions, and today I'm going to show you how to join a WebEx meeting and what it looks like from the different ends of being a host and a participant. Cool. So the first thing, I'm, I'm going to get a meeting going here between these two laptops in front of me. Um, the first laptop over here, we're just going to hit Start Meeting. I'm going to leave the microphones muted in these cases um, just because we don't want feedback bouncing back between the two laptop and the internal microphones of the laptop. Normally you'd unmute yourself and join the meeting normally, but for this case I'm leaving them muted. Over here on this other computer, this is where the attendee is or participant is going to be joining from. Um, we have our meeting link here. We've already scheduled that. You can watch that in a later video. I'll put that link right here as well as in the description. Um, but I'm going to just click and join this meeting from that meeting invite via Outlook. And we're joining that meeting now. And we've got everything else set up here. We're going to start the video, see what that looks like. Great. And we're going to join that meeting. So as the um, attendee or participant joining this meeting, you can easily find that in the calendar section of your Outlook account. That's going to be where that goes if you accept the meeting. Again, we've talked about that in a later video. You can watch that here. And if you're the host, you can also find that meeting if you've lost where your link is or it's for some reason not showing up in your, uh, in your WebEx panel that starts up with your system. You can always go back into the Outlook uh, calendar and find that invite and find that meeting that you're hosting. So um, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you on the host side of things what it looks like um, to be a host uh, of a meeting and what kind of controls you have over the participant. So the first thing we're going to notice here is we have a, a few more controls at the top of the screen and at the bottom of the screen than the participant does. So the first thing we're going to do is look up at the top kind of left hand side of the screen. There's a whole bunch of menu options similar to um, most uh, software and you have file, edit, share, all those things. Um, but one thing that we want to take a look at is the participant menu at the top. This is really, really key. So if you're a teacher or you're a presenter and you don't want anyone else to speak or speak over you in the meeting, this is a huge setting that's really, really important. Teams actually just implemented this and you can see that in a video here. Um, but the main thing that we want to focus on here in WebEx is allowing attendees to unmute themselves. This is really, really important. So if this is checked, which we have it checked here and it automatically comes checked, um, this will allow, if I jump over to the attendee screen, you'll be able to mute and unmute yourself, very simply, just like that. If we uncheck that as an option, you'll see on the other side, we get a notification that says you are muted and can't unmute yourself. This is really, really key if you're doing any sort of presentation, if you're teaching, um, where you don't want all the attendees in your meeting to be able to unmute themselves. The next thing in that participant menu, we're going to just flip that back on, is assigning privileges. This is another very, very important thing uh, that WebEx has, and that's a great feature. So, communication. So this refers to the chat features, the polling features, everything that's in these side menus here. I'll show you um, what it looks like from a participant view here. So you can see the participants, you can see us both in this meeting. You can add notes, personal notes, um, but we have the chat. And so right now we can chat privately to our host computer and we can also just chat freely to everyone else. If there was more people in this meeting than just me and myself and I here, then we'd be able to chat to everyone. The thing that we want to look at in the host side of things is you can change the participant privileges in and make them able to chat or not able to chat with different people. So you can specifically select who you want them to be able to chat with. So we can say, all, if there's a whole bunch of other participants, we can 
uncheck that. We, want, we don't want them to chat amongst each other. We want them to focus on the meeting that's at hand. We want only questions to go to a presenter or the host. Um, the next thing is you can chat publicly, publicly with everyone. We don't want uh, them to be able to chat publicly with everyone. We want to keep the chats to a minimum. We really don't. We really want any questions directed at the host or the presenter. So we can uncheck that as well. And then what's really key is if you're changing any setting in a WebEx meeting live, you really want to make sure to hit the supply button. So once you hit it, it happens. It, it, the, the changes you made have taken effect and then you just hit OK just to confirm that. So now if we go, if we're the attendee here, you, see, you can see that we've lost that ability to chat with everyone. And we can only chat to the host and presenter. We can just say, hello. And if we hop over here to our chat as the host, we got that. Um, but this is a private chat. No one else is seeing that at all. The next thing that we can show you in here um, that we have control over as a host is the bottom kind of menu here. So you have quite a few options. Um, the first that's kind of important um, that lots of people use is the recording feature. Um, using the recording feature can be uh, really great to capture your meetings. Um, but what you want to do first before you just hit record um, is you want to go back to that site, um, to your company site. You want to go to preferences and then you want to go to recording and you'll see that you can actually choose what layout you're recording per different scenario. So we'll jump back into the meeting here. Perfect. So again, I wanted to make clear recording is different from the layout of your screen. So if you change the layout to focus, it's not going to affect the recording. Okay. This is really key to note because in some other virtual meeting softwares, if you change your layout, it does change the recording in WebEx. It doesn't, you have to select those settings separately in preferences. And we can go to full screen, hide names and videos, hide non video part participants. There's lots of options in the layout feature. I'm going to go back to grid mode so we can see both. Another thing with record, you can record to the cloud. So this records directly to your WebEx site where you can, where it generates a file and you can download that file from your WebEx site. You can also select to record on your own system. This is good if you don't have a lot of storage space on your laptop or system and you're using a lot of external devices or external hard drives, it'd be best to record to the cloud. Um, I've always recorded to the cloud. I've had no issues with it. Now, talking about sharing content, this is really, really uh, important. Right now, we have it set in the meeting as the host and presenter. They're the only ones who can share. Um, and that's simply, you go to the participant uh, menu at the top left-hand corner of the screen, and it's simply anyone can share. If you check this box, now over on the participant view, we can share content. Before, I'll show you again, it was grayed out. So we uncheck that over on the participant view, we cannot share, we cannot select that, uh, that button at all. And the host side, we can easily share content. One more thing as a host that you have control over that the participants and attendees might not be able to do is creating a breakout session. So if you use Teams or Zoom the, in, and teaching, uh, this is a really useful feature and WebEx has it as well. Um, all you need to do is hit the three dots kind of near the leave meeting button or end meeting for all button. You got to be careful not to click that button by accident and accidentally end the meeting for everyone. But we can just hit the three dots here, enable breakout sessions. We can select that. And then we have a couple options here. Um, you can assign one participant into the session or you can do this manually. I prefer to do it manually. So all we have to do is make sure that we select our other participant here. We're going to start a breakout session with them and we're going to join a wedge here to that breakout session. 
So that means we're the only one left in the meeting room and the breakout session was started over here. Um, to end those breakout sessions, all you need to do is select the breakout sessions menu. You can, you can move them around, you can remove them from that breakout session, or you can end all breakout sessions and everyone will come back to the regular meeting screen. So now we've returned to the main meeting. Everything is set up for us. We're back uh, to normal. And, and it just gives you a countdown at the top that all breakout sessions will close in uh, 30 seconds or so. This is just to make sure that everyone has time to get any files or get themselves um, back into the regular meeting mode. It's really, really great. Lots of really great options in WebEx. If you'd like to watch other videos about WebEx, you can click over here. If you'd like to watch videos about uh, Teams and other virtual call software, you can click over here. And if you like what Skycom's doing, you think this was helpful, you can hit subscribe right here. Thanks for watching.